Welcome to Go Math Chapter 4, Lesson 4.1. Today, the standard we are working on is in number and operations in base 10, 5.2. This standard says, I can explain patterns and the number of zeros of the product when multiplying by powers of 10. I can explain the placement of the decimal point when a decimal is multiplied or divided by a power of 10. I can use whole number exponents to denote powers of 10. So we did do a lesson back in chapter one where we were multiplying by powers of 10, but those were with whole numbers. Today we are going to be working with multiplication patterns with decimals. So our essential question is asking, how can patterns help you place the decimal point in a product? I am working from page 233. Under the unlock the problem question, it says, Cindy is combining equal sized rectangles from different fabric patterns to make a postage stamp quilt. Each rectangle has an area of 75 hundredths of a square inch. If she uses 1,000 rectangles to make the quilt, what will be the area of the quilt? So we are going to use a pattern to find the product. Notice we are multiplying by powers of 10 that are getting bigger. I call these increasing powers of 10. That means we are going to multiply by 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. My powers of 10 are getting bigger, so I call them increasing powers of 10. Now, when we were working with whole numbers, we knew that when we were multiplying by 10, 100, or 1,000, we just had to add the number of zeros behind the whole number that we were working with that went along with 10, 100, and 1,000. So 10 adding one zero, 100 adding two zeros, and 1,000 adding three zeros. Well, because we are working with decimals, we are not just adding zeros. We need to make sure we are moving our decimal place um, as we are multiplying. And that's essentially what we did when we multiplied by um, our whole numbers. So if I would show this multiplying by whole numbers, I would have one times, and let's say 75, which we all know is 75. 10 times 75, well, that would give us 750. 100 times 75 would be 7,500. And then 1,000 times 75, we know is 75,000. Well, essentially, when we did that, when we added those zeros, we were moving our decimal point back an additional place value, um, just like with our zero and the 10, 100, and 1,000. So with our 75, our whole number has a decimal at the very end. So that decimal after the 75 to uh, multiply it by 10 would move it one place value back. And that's why we added a zero. 75 times 100 would move our decimal two place values back. So that's why we added two zeros. And 75 times 1,000 would uh, move three decimal place values. So that is why we add three zeros. So what we are doing today is we are moving the decimal point um, to show if we are multiplying by 10, 100, or 1,000 for our increasing powers of 10. When I move my decimal, I do call it swooping. And um, when I swoop, I do move that decimal point however many places it needs to according to my zeros. So obviously, 1 times 75 hundredths gives me that 75 hundredths. Now, 10 times 75 hundredths, I go in from the decimal in the 75 hundredths, swoop one place value to the right, so therefore I now have 7 and 5 tenths. Multiplying by 100, 100 has two zeros, so that means I swoop two place values to the right, so that's how we get 75. Now, when you write the 75, you do not have to have the decimal behind it. Um, like they have in their answer. Remember, all whole numbers are understood to have a decimal. You just don't have to show them. And 1,000 times 7,500, 1,000 has three zeros, so that would be three swoops to the right. And notice there is a swoop with nothing there. So because there is a swoop with nothing there, that tells us to add a zero, so we would have 750. 
So the final question is asking if she uses a thousand of those rectangles, how many square inches would it be? Well, that would give us 750 square inches. Again, you do not have to put the decimal at the end of a whole number. So going down to the question, uh, number one, as you multiply by increasing powers of 10, so the powers of 10 that got bigger, 10, 100, and 1,000, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? So we would have to say the decimal moves to the right. decimal has to move to the right because I need the answer to be getting bigger. I need the answer to increase. So now we also have place value patterns that can be used to find the product and the decimals uh, one tenth and one hundredth. So notice we are going to be multiplying uh, by one tenth and one hundredth. So that is what I would call decreasing powers of 10, where my powers of 10 are getting smaller. So for example one, it says Jorge is making a scale model of the Willis Tower in Chicago for a theater set. The height of the tower is 1,353 feet. If the model is one hundredth of the actual size of the building, how tall is the model? So first of all, we need to figure out what, what our answer is, uh, or what our question is asking us to find. And they are telling us that the model will be one hundredth of the actual size. So the fraction of the actual size would be one hundredth. And to show that using a decimal, I would say 0 0.01. That is how you would show one hundredth of a decimal. So now, obviously, the actual height is 1,353 feet. So showing the multiplying by decreasing powers of 10. So notice I went from 1 to 1 tenth to 100. They're getting smaller, so they're decreasing. I actually will have to sweep my decimal to the left because, again, I need my answers to get smaller because the powers of 10 are decreasing. So any number times one always equals that same number. So one times 1,353 equals 1,353. Now when I multiply by one tenth, I need to count how many digits are behind my decimal. So notice I have one digit behind my decimal. So that tells me I need to swoop one digit to the left. Like I said before, all whole numbers are understood to have a decimal at the very end. So my 1,353 has a decimal behind that very last three. I now have to swoop that decimal one place value to the left to make my answer smaller. So one tenth of that would be 135 and three tenths. Now, when I multiply by 100, Again, counting the number of digits behind my decimal, there are two, the zero and the one. So from the end of my whole number where my decimal is understood to be, I'm going to swoop two place values to the left. So that means my decimal will have to be in between the three and the five to make 13 and 53 hundredths. So Jorge's model of the Willis Tower will be 13 and 53 hundredths feet tall. Again, when you're multiplying by decreasing powers of 10, you swoop to the left. And when you're swooping to the left, make sure if there is no decimal located and within the whole number, it always swoops in the very end. So to answer question number two, as you multiply by decreasing powers of 10, how does the position of the decimal point change in the product? The decimal moves to the left. And again, when we move it, we call it swooping. On the next page, 
for example, number two, it says three friends are selling items at an arts and crafts fair. Josie makes $45.75 selling jewelry. Mark makes a hundred times as much as Josie makes by selling his custom furniture. Carlos makes a tenth of the money Mark makes by selling paintings. How much money does each friend make? So we automatically need to start with Josie's amount because we know that she does make a total of $45.75. Now for Mark, it says that he makes a hundred times as much as Josie. So we know that for Mark, we need to take 100 times the amount that Josie makes, which is $45.75. Now to help us find 100 times $45.75, they are going to have us fill in the pattern where we are multiplying by increasing powers of 10. So any number times one always equals that exact same number. So one times $45.75 does give me that $45.75. Now times 10, 10 has one zero. So that means I have to do one swoop to the right. So from my decimal, swooping once to the right because increasing powers of 10 swoop to the right. So now that shows me that it would be $457.50. Remember, all change goes out two decimal place values. So if there's only one digit, you automatically have to add a zero to make it go out two decimal place values. And finally, for times 100, 100 has two zeros. So therefore, we have to swoop two times to the right to make it bigger. So one. Two. Remember, I do that arrow so that way it shows exactly where my decimal now needs to be placed. And that tells me that Mark would then make $4,575. If you wanted to, you could put the point zero zero, but that does not necessarily have to happen. So we have Mark's amount of 4000 575. Now, if you recall from the question above, it now says that Carlos makes a tenth of the money that Mark makes by selling paintings. So now we have to finish Carlos out. And remember, we found that Carlos has one tenth, so multiply by 0 0.1. And one tenth of what Mark made, which was $4,575. So now if I wanted to fill in the pattern, I know that I would have 1 times 4,575, which would give me that same amount, 4,575. Now to multiply that by 1 tenth, Remember, I have to count how many digits are behind my decimal. There's only one digit behind my decimal. So therefore, it does tell me to swoop only one time. And because it's decreasing, it would need to go to the left. So swooping one time to the left would then tell me that Carlos makes $457.50. Again, I had to add the zero at the end because I was working with money. Now, if you um, recognize this, multiplying by decreasing powers of 10 is essentially dividing by 10. So one, uh, multiplying by 1 tenth would be dividing by 10. Multiplying by 1 hundredth would be dividing by 100, if that helps you uh, make any sense of this. So therefore, I can now say that Carlos makes $457.50. So now under the try this, notice we do have our powers of 10 written as a base with an exponent. That is just the same as multiplying by 10, 100, or 1,000, except for our exponent now tells us how many swoops to do instead of the zeros. So remember, if your exponent is a zero, that tells you no swoops. So 10 to the zero power times 4.78 would just give me 4.78. 10 to the first power 
therefore now tells me to scoop one decimal place to the right again increasing goes to the right so one place value to the right so from my decimal swooping once to the right would now give me 47.8 multiplying by 10 to the second power i now have two uh, for my exponent so that would be two swoops to the right so from the decimal one two gives me 478 and now times 10 to the third power, the exponent three tells me three swoops to the right. So from my decimal, one, two, three, if I have a swoop with nothing there, that does tell me I have to add a zero. So I would have the answer of 4,780. For the try this B, notice we have decreasing powers of 10. So that tells me to swoop left. If it helps, make sure you're showing an arrow above the problem and the direction that you need to be swooping. So decreasing, we have to swoop to the left. So any uh, problem that we do for this, we would swoop to the left, except for the 38 times 1, we know is 38. So 38 times 1 tenth, or 1 tenth has one digit behind the decimal. So for the, you have to swoop for the 38, not the 1 tenth. So for the 38, all whole numbers are understood to have a decimal at the end. So from behind my 8, swooping once to the left would give me 3.8. And now 38 times 100, I have two digits behind my decimal. So that means two swoops to the left. So from behind my 38, swoop 1, 2. So therefore, I need to place my decimal in front of the 3. You do not have to have the zero in front for your answer, but remember that is um, ideal so that way you don't forget to place the decimal in your answer. You can, however, just put 0.38. All right, moving on to the share and show. It says to complete the pattern. Notice that they have most of the pattern filled in for us, and we do have increasing powers of 10. I'm multiplying by powers of 10 that are getting bigger. So if I'm multiplying by increasing powers of 10, my decimal point moves one place to the right for each increasing power of 10. So for the 10 to the third power at the bottom times 17 and 4 hundredths, the exponent of three tells me I must swoop three places to the right. So from my decimal, one, two, three, I have a swoop that has nothing there, so that tells me to add a zero. So I would have 17,040. You do not have to put the decimal at the end of that number because it is a whole number. All right, moving on to page 235, completing the pattern for two, three, and four. Notice for number two, I'm multiplying by increasing powers of 10. My powers of 10 are getting bigger, so therefore my decimal must move to the right. That's why I show the arrow pointing to the right. So one times three and 19 hundredths would give me three and 19 hundredths. 10 times three and 19 hundredths, 10 has a one zero. So from the decimal swooping one place to the right, would give me 31 and 9 tenths. Multiplying by 100, I have two zeros, so two swoops to the right would give me 319. And multiplying by 1,000, which has three zeros, swooping three to the right from my decimal, one, two, three. I have a swoop with nothing there, so that tells me to add a zero, so I would have 3,190. Again, when they're whole numbers, you do not have to put the decimal in your answer. For number three, my increasing powers of 10, again, I'm working with 10 to the zero, 10 to the first, 10 to the second, 10 to the third, so those got bigger. So again, I'm going to swoop to the right. So from the decimal, whatever my exponent is, that's the number of swoops I do. So for 10 to the zero power, my exponent is a zero, so that means I do not move the decimal at all. Times 10 to the first power, moving one decimal place value to the right, 
So from the decimal, grouping once would give me 456 times 10 to the second power. My exponent of 2 tells me to swoop 2 to the right, so 1, 2. I have a swoop with nothing there, so I have to add 1, 0. So I have 4,560. And times 10 to the third power tells me three swoops to the right. So from my decimal, one, two, three, I have two swoops that have nothing there, so two zeros must be added. So 45,600 would be the final answer for 45.6 times 10 to the third. All right, so notice for number four, my powers of 10 are getting smaller. I'm going from one to one tenth to 100. So I have decreasing powers of 10, so therefore my decimal must move to the left. So any number times one always equals that same exact number. So I'm going to rewrite the 6,391 times one tenth. My one tenth has one digit behind the decimal. So going from the end of my whole number, remember all whole numbers have a decimal at the end, swooping one place to the left would now give me 639 and 1 tenth. And now multiplying by 100, I have two digits behind my decimal. So from the end of my whole number, swooping two to the left would give me 63 and 91 hundredths. Moving on to the on your own. Now notice we do have uh, algebra where you're trying to find the value of n. So for this, we do have to figure out what is our missing number from our multiplication problem. So notice for number five, you have n times $3.25, and they are telling you that it is now $325, or $325. Um, and no change. Notice the decimal went from in between the three and the two to now behind the five. So if I had two swoops to the right to place the decimal behind my five, that does mean I had to multiply by 100. For number six, I do know that I had one tenth times a missing number and when I multiplied by one tenth, it would give me 89 and five tenths. So we have to undo the swooping to the left. Remember any number swoop, uh, swooping to the left would make it a smaller number. So in order to figure out what that bigger number was, I actually have to reverse, so I have to swoop it to the right. So I am swooping my decimal from my answer one place value to the right because we had to swoop it once to the left to multiply by one tenth. So that does give me 895 for that missing number. And you can always double check that by then taking your 895 and swooping once to the left to make sure you do get the 89.5. And for number seven, 10 to the third power times n equals 630. So remember the exponent of three tells you three swoops and since it's an increasing uh, power of 10, we had to swoop to the right. So if my whole number is 630, I have to undo the swooping to the right three times. So I have to swoop to the left three times to undo that. So swooping to the left three times does place my decimal in front of the six. So we actually had um, 63 hundredths or if you wanted to keep the zero at the end, you could say 630 thousandths. Either answer would be acceptable. Moving on to question number eight. A glacier in Alaska moves about 29 and 9 tenths meters a day. About how much farther will it move in a thousand days than it will move in a hundred days? So this is a two-part question. Our first part is we need to figure out how far it would move in a thousand days. So we need to take our 29 and 9 tenths times a thousand. So my thousand has three zeros, so it tells me three swoops and it's to the right because it's increasing. So from my decimal, one, two, three, 
you notice I have two swoops with nothing there, so I do have to add two zeros. So I would, in a thousand days, it would move 29,900 meters. Now I also have to figure out for a hundred days. So again, take the one day of 29 and 9 tenths, this time only multiplying by a hundred. So my 100 has two zeros, and that tells me to sweep two times to the right. So one, two. But this time I only have one swoop with nothing there, so I only have to add one zero. So when I, I am going to make sure that I have this all lined up because it does ask about how much farther. So that tells me my final step will be to subtract the two numbers together. So making sure my decimal is lined up, I would have 2,990 meters for 100 days. Subtracting these, 0 minus 0 is 0. I cannot take 0 minus 9, so I'm going to borrow 1. So now I have 10 minus 9, which is 1. I cannot do 8 minus 9, so I'm going to borrow 1 from this 9. Now 18 minus 9 is 9. 8 minus 2 is 6. And just bring down the 2. So that means about 26,910 meters would be uh, the difference between 1,000 days and 100 days. Now my last question I do want to do with you is question 9. This is very, very similar to how you will see it asked on your test uh, for chapter 4. So it does say choose yes or no to indicate whether the product is correct. So we are going to show the swoops to make sure that they did put the decimal in the correct location for the final answer. So for 8100 times 10, times 10 is an increasing power of 10, so that does tell me to swoop to the right. So swooping once to the right would give me 8 and 1 tenths. Notice they did not put the decimal in between the 8 and the 1 like I show it's supposed to be. So that one would be leveled in as no. Next B, 3300 times 100. 100 has two zeros. Again, multiplying by increasing powers of 10 tells me to swoop to the right. So 1, 2 to the right from my decimal puts it behind the 3, and that is what they are showing for the answer for B, so yes. For C, 500 times 100, 100 has two zeros. Moving to the right, since it's increasing power of 10, so from my decimal, 2 to the right, does place my decimal behind the 5. I do not need the zeros in front of the five anymore, so therefore, yes, this answer is correct as well. Now for D, I have 70 hundredths times 1,000. Remember, 1,000 has three zeros, so that's three swoops, and it is to the right since 1,000 is increasing. So from my decimal, one, two, three. Notice I have a swoop with nothing there. So we should actually have the answer of 700. They only put 70, so no. And for E, 3,800 times 10. 10 has one zero. It is an increasing power of 10. So therefore, from my decimal, swooping once to the right, would place it in between the three and the eight, or three and eight tenths. They do not have three and eight tenths. They have 38 thousandths. So that one would be no as well. All right, moving on to the homework page. When you enter these into Schoology, make sure you are not forgetting to place the decimal if you need to show it. If it is a whole number, you do not have to put the decimal. Again, if you are creating a whole number when you move the decimal, do not put the decimal in your answer. Um, if you uh, have to move a decimal to the right and it does take a zero away from the decimal in the front, you do not have to have that zero anymore as well. So for lesson 4.1, you are going to answer all of the odd questions plus number 10. So that means 3, 5, 7, 9, 
10 and 11. Now for the top, because you are filling in patterns, these are an all or nothing type of question. So make sure you have all of your answers uh, entered in correctly before you submit it. Because if you just get one of them wrong, the whole entire question will be counted wrong. Notice there are some that are moving um, increasing powers of 10 and there are a couple that are decreasing powers of 10. So make sure you are scooping to the right or to the left when necessary. Going down to number 10, Nathan plants equal size squares of sod in his front yard. Each square has an area of six square feet. Nathan plants a total of a thousand squares in his yard. What is the total area of the squares of sod? So for this, we are taking the area of one uh, square, which was six square feet, times how many uh, sod squares there are, which is a thousand. So you just need to give me the answer for six times a thousand, and that will give me my answer in feet squared. For number 11, this is going to be exactly like the answer that we had to find on page 234 underneath example two. So you can use example two as your reference when you are working with this uh, problem. So it says three friends are selling items at a bake sale. May makes $23.25 selling bread. Inez sells gift baskets and makes 100 times as much as May. Joe sells pies and makes one tenth of the money Inez makes. How much money does each friend make? So we automatically know that May, she makes $23.25. Now for Inez, it says she makes 100 times as much as May. So to solve for Inez, you're going to take 100 times the amount that May uh, made, which is $23.25, and that will give you the answer for Inez. And finally, Joe, she makes one-tenth of the money that Inez makes. So for Joe, one-tenth and as a decimal would be written as 0 0.1 times and then you need to put how much money Inez made right here, and that will give you the amount that Joe makes. So again, you're going to take the answer from Inez, place it in that this missing blank right here to find out how much money Joe makes. Moving on to the back, you are going to solve all of the questions on the back. And for question number one, it says the length of the Titanic was 882 feet. Porter's history class is building a model of the Titanic. The model is one hundredth of the actual length of the ship. How long is the model? So we are going to take the true actual length, which was 882 feet, times one hundredth, and remember as a decimal, it's 0.01. Obviously, this is a decreasing power of 10, so you're probably going to be swooping to the left, and this will tell us the actual, uh, or the model length in feet. For number two, Ted is asked to multiply 10 to the second times 18 and 72 hundredths. How many places and in which direction should he move the decimal point to get the correct product? So... In Schoology, it's two drop-down boxes. It'll be blank, so the number of places, so blank places to the blank. So you're gonna tell me how many um, times you have to swoop uh, in the first blank, so your number of swoops, and then the last blank, am I swooping to the right or to the left? Again, in Schoology, those are two drop-down boxes. For question number three, the table shows the height in meters of some of the world's tallest buildings. What are the heights in order from least to greatest? So it is working with just the numbers. 
So please make sure you're placing those numbers in order from least to greatest. For number four, Madison had $187.56 in her checking account. She deposited $49.73, and then she used her debit card to spend $18.64. What is Madison's new account balance? So first of all, we need to make sure we start with what she had in her checking account, which we do know that is $187.56. Now, deposited means you're putting money onto that account, you're adding money onto that account. So we need to add the $49.73. Now, when you use your debit card, you are spending money, so therefore you no longer have that money in your account. So once you get that answer to your addition problem, you will then subtract $18.64 and that answer will give you your final answer to enter into Schoology. For question number five, what is three and 47 hundredths rounded to the nearest tenth? Again, make sure you underline the tenth digit, look at the digit to the right of that, see if it tells you to go up or down, and then make sure anything that comes behind that rounded number is just dropped off. And finally, for number six, the city gardener ordered 1,682 tulip bulbs for Riverside Park. The bulbs were shipped in 35 boxes with an equal number of bulbs in each box. How many tulip bulbs were in each box? So we know the total number of tulip bulbs was 1,680. And the bulbs, they were shipped in 35 boxes. So therefore, to figure out the number of bulbs in each box, we need to divide by 35. Please let us know if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for listening.